So wow, what a terrific day. Thank you to all of our speakers and panelists um, and moderators over the day. Um, I really was hoping that this event would be like a real life crossroads and I really feel that energy and really appreciate everyone kind of bringing that energy to the table. Um, so I get, I've been working at the National Academies. I have a, more than 16 years working here. Um, and one of the coolest things about working here is we get to engage with all of these topics all of the time. We have amazing colleagues who are um, engaging with the leaders in fields across all areas of science, engineering, and medicine. Um, and each of those groups of experts are, are engaging with interested audiences and others who are working in that space. It's just, it's really very cool to be able to kind of be at that nexus. Um, and so what we're hoping to do in, the, in, the, in our tabling showcase and our networking reception is to kind of give you a little entree into that world. Um, and so I'm really delighted that many, many of our colleagues have are joining us here throughout the day and this evening, um, and they'll be tabling um, in, um, in the building so that you can go and meet them and talk to them and learn um, about what they're doing and find ways to collaborate and connect with them. I'm, I'm going to do a bit of a kind of run through those different activities so that you kind of have the lay of the land, but also so our online audience can have a little bit of that um, sort of introduction to the various kinds of activities that we're doing. Um, and I'm going to ask my, the forgiveness of my colleagues because I will surely not adequately represent all the amazing work that you're doing. Um, the good news is that they're here, so you can just wander around and find them, and um, they will um, be happy to share with you more details or correct me if I got things wrong. So, okay, so let's, let's jump into it. So um, um, here again is the, is the map um, that we've been using before. Um, and we are going to be doing this showcase in two spaces um, in the west court. So that's if you go out to the Great Hall and take a right. It's that kind of open space there. Um, and then in the lecture room, um, if you go into the Great Hall and take a left, you will find your way to the lecture room. So um, I'm going to start by walking through the things that will we'll be in the west court. We'll start on the west side of the building, and then we'll make our way over to the east side of the building. Um, so um, if you want to continue engaging around climate and health and medicine, um, please head to the West Court. Um, our colleagues who uh, work with the National Academy of Medicine Grand Challenge on Climate Change, Human Health and Equity will be there. Um, and you already heard a lot about this uh, Grand Challenge from uh, Dr. Zhao earlier today. Um, they're doing a lot of work around communications, decarbonizing the health sector, um, thinking about systems transformation, engaging with communities around climate. So please um, go uh, you know, find your way there if you're interested in that topic. Um, our colleagues from the Health and Medicine Division at the National Academies are, will also be there. Um, and we have a whole group that works on global health um, and they, um, including climate change, is one of the themes that they address. Um, and they've looked at, you know, the connection between global climate change and extreme events. Um, I worked with them a few years ago to do a project around microbial threats emerging from the Arctic as the permafrost thaws. That's a little frightening if you want to <laughs> talk about that one. Um, and uh, any, anyhow, so they're, they're really thinking about that intersection of global health and, and climate change. Um, also in the health and medicine division, we have a forum on medical and public health preparedness for dis disasters and emergencies. Um, and so this, this forum's been around for a while, since 2007, um, and convenes leaders who are looking to improve medical and public health preparedness and response and recovery from disasters and, emergen and emergencies. And of course, as we're seeing more extreme events, um, it's more, uh, they're thinking more about how they can think about climate change in the context of their work. All right, so also in the West Court, um, our colleagues from the Transportation Research Board will be present. If you didn't know it, the National Academies, um, part of our, our work is this, the TRB, which is a, an amazing uh, group that does, uh, convenes transportation professionals from across the country and the world, um, they um, engage with the transportation managers and departments of transportation in every re um, uh, locality around the country. Um, they hold, if you like this conference, they hold a way bigger conference um, in January where they bring together transportation pr professionals at the convention center. 
Um, and they've been doing work on climate change for a long time um, and have numerous kind of reports around both the contributions of transportation sector to um, climate change and how you can mitigate those um, emissions, as well as how we can make that sector more resilient to the changes that are uh, coming forward. So please uh, 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 look for um, those folks to talk about these issues if you're interested. Um, they'll also be near our National Academy of Engineering, um, and um, an NAE is the third of the academies. You've heard from our two other presidents today. Tomorrow morning, first thing, you'll have an opportunity to hear from Dr. John Anderson, who's here in the room with us too, um, and uh, to talk about kind of the role of engineering in, in um, addressing the climate crisis. Um, he and his colleagues are, are here too um, uh, this evening, and you'll have an opportunity to talk with them about how they're thinking about engineering solutions to climate issues, um, including some of the work they've done around the health risks of indoor air exposure. Um, we have a number of programs here at the academies that seek to bring together um, uh, those working in different sectors on different topics. So we do have a, and one of those is a program on science and technology for sustainability. Um, they have a roundtable that's been around for, I think, more than 25 years now um, that includes representatives from industry and academia and government and others who are working to advance sustainability. Um, also grateful to our colleagues from the sustainability program who helps um, they run the front help sort of run the frontier planet prize so they put us in touch with Jason who was on our last panel here um, and we're, we're glad to partner with them um, so uh, definitely encourage you to head over and connect with them if you're interested in, in discussing more on sustainability um, another program we have that tries to do this bridging across different sectors is the government university industry research roundtable also known as GWIR. Um, and this is a joint roundtable of the three academies, uh, the Academy of Sciences, Academy of Engineering and Medicine, where they convene senior leadership leaders from these different sectors to talk about uh, sort of critical issues um, related to national and global science and technology agenda. And of course, climate change has been one of those issues that they've addressed over the years. Um, Climate Crossroads is another one in this category of trying to bring together lots of different um, folks working on the topic, and our table will be in the West Court as well. So if you want to connect with the Climate Crossroads team, um, please uh, head over there. In addition to this uh, summit, we I just wanted to highlight a couple of our other activities. Um, we do hold a monthly webinar series called Climate Conversations. We've been running that for over three years. Um, I think we have like over 77,000 views. It's, you know, it's really been, hopefully I got that number <laughs> right. Um, it's been a pretty popular one. Um, and in kind of these kinds of conversations where we're trying to sort of engage um, um, around uh, various topics uh, related to climate change. We're excited that our August climate conversation will be on sports and the intersection of climate um, and the impact on um, how we, um, how uh, sort of sports are able to um, affected by that in terms of heat and other kinds of effects um, on sports. Uh, we're following up the Olympics um, and to sort of have that conversation there in late August. We also um, have a, um, and we heard some mention of it earlier, a Climate Crossroads Congressional Fellowship Program. This is one of the things I'm super excited that we're doing. Um, this is a fellowship program for current congressional staff. Well, they get to, where they have the opportunity to engage with our experts over a period of about nine months to learn about what um, kind of the sort of latest in science, engineering, and medicine related to climate change. Um, we are just finishing up and celebrating our first, first cohort today and um, are excited to announce our second cohort later this summer. So if you want to learn more about that work, please stop by the Climate Crossroads table in the West Court. Um, we had some mention of the arts and humanities, and the Academies does do some work in that space. We have a whole creative programming team, um, and they get a different kind of slide because they're kind of funky and do all sorts of different sorts of things. Um, so one of the things they do is run a science and entertainment exchange where they do consulting for Hollywood in writing movie and TV scripts. Um, and so um, they 
that is, they are very fun to talk to because they've got lots of stories of how science has been uh, shown up in, in, in our pop culture. Um, they also run uh, public engagement activities through the a program called Lab X. And I wanted to mention that because tomorrow afternoon, one of our concurrent sessions will be one of the games that they run, an extreme event game. Um, so if you're getting towards the end of the day yesterday or tomorrow and you want to kind of have a somewhat more interactive um, experience, really encourage you to, to check out that LabX game. Um, I've done it a couple times and it's super fun. Um, you get to role play um, different members of the community trying to respond to extreme events. Um, so that is the set of different um, um, tables that will be in the West Court. Um, we also wanted, while we're on the topic of arts, to bring your attention to um, the cultural programs that we have here at the National Academy of Sciences. Um, they're the folks that curate the art exhibits in this building and in our other building and host events at that sort of interface of science and arts. Um, and we're so thrilled that the exhibit that is um, uh, on display in the gallery is um, this climate science art um, that um, of, of Xavier Cortada. Um, and so if you happen to come back from lunch early, you would have seen a video describing some of that work. Um, that video is also playing on loop in the gallery. So as you're wandering your way over to the West Court or back, please take a moment to um, observe that, this, this art um, um, gallery uh, presentation. So, okay, just to reorient you, now we've gone through everything on the left side or the west side, um, and so now I'm going to kind of shift over to the different activities that we'll be featuring in on the east side of the building um, in the lecture room and the east court. All right, so our um, board on energy and environmental systems within our division of um, engineering and physical sciences is the sort of lead for our work that provides advice on the latest energy technologies and policies and the societal and environmental implications of energy system changes. They've been doing this work for a long time and have a deep body of reports and workshops and other activities um, that are really helping us chart the future of our energy systems. Um, in particular, they have um, uh, been working on um, pathways for decarbonizing or accelerating decarbonization in the United States. Um, in the last two, three years, they put out seminal reports on accelerating decarbonization that have been um, informed a lot of the policy decisions that have uh, been made in the last couple of years. Um, they, um, and as we all know, it's not, it's going to take uh, a few decades for us to kind of do this decarbonization journey. And so this team is really looking to um, establish sustained dialogues around the technical and societal challenges related to deep decarbonization. Um, they will be holding a session tomorrow morning from 11 to 12.15 if you are able to join that. Or you can head over to the lecture room and chat with the team this evening as well. Um, we also will have folks from our Earth Science and Applications from Space group. Um, this is part of our Space Studies Board. Um, and this is the uh, part of the academies that um, um, provides advice around um, the space-based um, observations of the Earth and how we can use those kinds of observations to monitor the impacts of climate change, improve our weather and climate prediction, um, document the effectiveness of emissions reductions and host of other applications as well. Um, they put out a decadal survey that provides advice to NASA and NOAA and USGS about those kinds of investments. Um, and they just released, um, I believe last week, a, a new report that um, kind of gives a mid midterm assessment on how, um, how progress is going in terms of that last decadal survey. So um, if you are interested in satellites, this is the place to go. Um, we also have our folks who have been working on artificial intelligence and climate. We are um, working to um, launch a, a new activity, a new roundtable that will bring together um, folks who are working in this space to enable ongoing discussions and shared learning and nimble coordination around these emerging issues related to AI and climate. It's a fast moving space. And so we feel like it would be a lot of value to having a place where we can bring folks together to talk about it in an ongoing fashion. 
Um, we will, um, we have, I believe, just opened our call for nominations for this. So if this is something you're interested in being part of, um, please head over to this table in the lecture room um, and chat with the team there about how you can get involved um, and, and uh, you know, other ideas you have as we're, we're getting this work off the ground. Um, in the lecture room, we will also have our colleagues from the Division of Behavioral and Social Sciences and Education, which we call DBAS. Um, and there are many, um, you know, of course, um, humans and behavior and social sciences um, and education are really um, central to the work that we're doing around climate change. Um, and so they have a number of different activities that are, are related to climate change. Um, we, um, their table will be focusing on their societal act experts action network, which we call Sean. Um, as well as the work of their Board on Science Education and the Board on Environmental Change and Society. Um, I'll just highlight that our Board on Science Education is, um, with partners, is just launching a new project as well on education for thriving in a changing climate. Um, so again, if you're interested in that topic, please um, seek out these folks um, and you can um, learn more about what they're planning to do. Um, DBAS has also been um, leading on our um, efforts to build new work around climate resilient communities. Um, and we're thinking, you know, um, they've been doing a lot of work to understand and organize a body of work focused on communities, on climate adaptation, resilience, and social sciences with a particular focus on equity. Um, this team will be um, holding a session tomorrow afternoon as well to talk about the next steps in that work um, and would be really eager to hear your input and thoughts on that and to get you involved in it as well. Um, in the lecture room, we also will have our colleagues from the Division on Earth and Life Studies. Um, and DELS, as we call it, is where we focus on advancing the understanding of science behind Earth and climate connections to predict, mitigate, and adapt to future changes. Um, they have expertise around conserving and restoring ecosystems, protecting endangered species, helping wildlife thrive, um, and guiding solutions to manage risks, manage, reduce, and respond to hazards and risks. Um, and there's just a, a couple of the recent activities are highlighted here. Um, last month, they released a report on uh, new strategies to modernize probable maximum precipitation estimates. If you don't know what probable maximum precipitation estimates is, are, I wouldn't be surprised. This is a, 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 um, a value that's used in planning um, dams and uh, nuclear facilities, other, other kinds of infrastructure that has a high risk if it were to fail. Um, and um, this guidance will help understand what kind of extreme rainfall might um, happen in the future and how we can better build those kinds of infrastructure. Um, DELS also has done work on the intersection of macroeconomics and climate-related risks and opportunities. Um, and that work has fed into some of the thinking that the White House Council on Economic Advisors has been doing as well during the last few years. Um, so for those of you who um, went to the breakout session, the concurrent session earlier today on finance, members of that, that team is the one that's been working in this area of macroeconomics and climate as well. And so I encourage you to um, head over to the Dells table to learn more about that. Um, Dells will actually have two tables. Um, one will be focused on their work on earth and climate connections. So things like negative emissions technologies or carbon dioxide removal and sequestration, um, research priorities for um, Antarctica and the Southern Ocean area, um, work around the greenhouse gas emissions from wildland fires and lots of other work as well. Um, and their second table will focus on their work related to conservation in ecological health, including work on biodiversity, offshore wind, and the linkages between soil health and human health. Um, all right, so we're almost to the end. Um, we do have some work that is, um, I'm excited that our, our colleagues who do work internationally have joined us as well. Um, so we have an inter-academy partnership, which is a global network of academies of science, medicine, and engineering around the world. So um, one of the secretariats for this network is housed here at the US National Academy of Sciences, um, and our colleagues who lead that work um, will be in the lecture room. Um, IAP has done a number of projects related to climate change. Um, uh, in particular, they recently have finished some work around decarbonizing transportation in Africa. 
um, and they've also done work on climate change and health. Um, so encourage you to um, uh, head to the lecture room to learn more about IAP's work. Um, and last but not least, we have our amazing science and engineering capacity development work. Um, you have seen some of the folks who are involved in this on the stage um, today, and we're so delighted that to work with our colleagues uh, um, to, sh to showcase some of the folks that they've been um, um, uh, been part of their programs. Um, they run the ExcelNet peer-to-peer -peer program, um, which we heard about during the Transboundary Water Panel. Um, they run the New Voices program, which Ari from our last panel is one of our New Voices members, this um, cohort um, that sort of identifies and um, um, provides capacity building for um, up-and-coming leaders in the science, engineering, and medicine. Um, they run a series of frontiers programs that um, uh, bridge uh, U.S. and scientists in other parts of the, of the world, in Africa, um, and Arab American frontiers, and a Latin America frontiers that um, um, have done some amazing conferences as well. Um, and then um, they uh, run the Merzion Science and Technology Policy Graduate Fellowship Program, where graduate students can come and spend a few months here at the National Academies learning about work in the science policy interface. Um, we are really delighted that our, our colleagues from the capacity development work have helped a lot in, in organizing uh, sessions for this event. Um, they'll also have a table in the lecture room if you'd like to connect with them. Um, and just to highlight a couple of their upcoming events, um, they will be holding, the New Voices um, folks will be holding a workshop in October on leveraging the National Climate Assessment to empower communities. And, um, and then in February, they will be holding the U.S. Africa Frontiers of Science, Engineering, and Medicine in Rwanda. Okay, so I have one last group that I want to highlight, and it's not in a National Academies group, but we're so thrilled that they're here. Um, the Center for Diverse Leadership in Science at UCLA has, has joined us here at the summit. Several students from this group are here. Um, and they are graciously hosting a community hub, which will be in the East Court. Um, so we invite you to go there if you'd like to connect with other folks who are interested in working at the community scale, or um, if you want to connect with students. Um, that is a place where we hope you will find in information and learn about what CLDS is doing, which is really exciting, um, as well as a place where we hope our young people and those interested in working at the community scale can connect with each other.